Hi, Scott again with the final part of the Doubling Your Productivity video series. Uh, and we're moving on quickly to tip number eight. Um, and this is working out what you are worth per hour. Once you work out what you're worth per hour, you start making more better strategic decisions as a business person. So let me elaborate. Let me use some quick figures, and I'm going from memory, so they might not be right, it's an illustration. If you think, you work firstly, you think, what do I want to earn next year? Well, I want to get 100 grand. I want to take 100 grand out of my business and have 100 grand, or your business to earn 100 grand if you've got staff and you need to pay them. But let's just take the figure of 100,000 pounds. That's what you want to earn in the next year. So we need to break that down into an hourly rate. So let's say we work 48 weeks a year, we take four weeks off. So your time is divided by the 48 weeks and let's say we work a 40 hour week, we break that figure down. So we're dividing 100 by 48 by 40. And I think that comes out, my example's right, to 48 pounds. So let's just round that up to 50. So that means my time would be worth 50 pounds an hour. So that's cool. So we now have that figure, and I need to add value to my business to the, the tune of 50, 50 quid an hour. Am I doing that with the tasks? And that's, that's what you ask yourself. So this tip alone, when you start looking at it like this, will definitely 50% make you 50% make you more productive because you just cut out all the bullshit, all the bad tasks, all the time-wasting stuff. So this in itself is a really, really powerful tip, is value your time, find out what it's worth, and then you can start looking at stuff. So, if you are worth £50 an hour, you can then start saying, Hi, do you want me for coffee? Do you want the working day? I'm missing your ages. You think, well, wait a minute. That's an hour and a half. That's 75 quid. Talking shit with that person is going to cost me 75 quid. And you can start saying, that's cool at the weekend, but during the working day, no. If people are asking, sitting, office gossiping, talking to you in the office, and you are sitting thinking, oh, what are we going on with my work? You can now look and think that conversation there is costing me money. So when you look at it, you could just sit and think when that person there is sitting telling me about how cool their kid looks in their school uniform, no offence if you're one of these people, because I bet a lot of people are, you're sitting talking to other entrepreneurs about how cool and different and special your kid is with their school uniform. You could sit and, sit and listen to that and say, that's just cost me 25 quid, listen to them. Or you could say, by the way, all kids look the same in their school uniform. There's tens, hundreds of thousands of kids. I don't need to see it. I'm on my way. You don't need to be as abrupt as that, but that is going on in your head. Things where people are gossiping, bitching, it's entrepreneurial spark. And there's a thing here where we talk about being eagles rather than ducks. There's loads of, there's not loads, but there's sometimes the odd duck and entrepreneurial spark hubs. And we know who those people are. You'll know them when I'm saying this in the video. There's people that watch soul like eagles and there's people that watch quack like ducks. Avoid those people. So you can start looking, I'm sitting speaking to this person and they're costing me money. Sitting and listening to this person around the water cooler or the photocopier is the same as you ripping up 10 pound notes because you now know your time is worth 50 pounds an hour, 100 pounds, however much that might be. Then you know your worth, you know your value. You should be cracking on to put that 50 pounds value into your business. So if you're pissing about on social media, and doing stuff that isn't when going for two hour lunches, you're not putting that 50 pounds value into your business. And it then makes it very hard for you to make your 100,000 pounds next year. If you're wasting time, if you're taking days off, if you're not being productive, if you're jumping between tasks uh, and you're not maximizing your productivity, that hourly rate next year when you make 50 means that your hourly rate goes down to 25 and, and compounds. So really, really powerful thing. Work out your hourly rate and then you can start making decisions on is that time generating that value for my business. Final example for this, there's a thing in the Ayrshire Hub where there's a sign on the dishwasher saying the first person in the hub will empty the dishwasher. And I have a problem with that because I'm the first person in four days out of five on average. So I'm in every day. So that sign tells me, hey, you need to you, you need to do this. That's the rules of the hub. I need to empty the dishwasher every single day, four days a week. Now, I've done the figures on that based on my hourly rate. So if I say that takes the time I walk from my office to there and empty it, which is a minute walking, minute, three minutes empty and putting stuff past, that's maybe five minutes a morning. No big deal. But if you've read uh, Darren Harvey's The Compound Effect, you know that that five minutes compounded every day, four days a week is 20 minutes, and compound that for 48, uh, 48 weeks a year, that costs me £2,000 minimum. To empty that dishwasher every day, when I'm the first person in, 
that punishes me to the tune of two thousand pounds because I've worked out my lower rate, um, and that's a low figure by the way. So it costs me two thousand pounds a year to empty that dishwasher. So. I don't always, I do it sometimes, but I don't empty it every day. Why should I? Because I'm valuing my time. And I look at that as that the decision to empty that dishwasher four days a week. When I'm in first, why would I be penalised for that? There will be people that waste their time. So they can waste their time with the dishwasher. I, I'm in that office. And if I can squeeze out five minutes a day, that's maybe one more sales email, one more sales call, one nice response, maybe a, a, a response in LinkedIn to somebody. I can do a lot with that five minutes. And I don't mind taking my turn in entrepreneurial spark, but I don't see why that sign says I should do it every day, four days a week. Why would I be doing that? Because it cost me £2,000. These are the decisions you can start looking at. Moving on to tip number nine, and that is outsource all the stuff that, doesn't, that you don't like doing and that doesn't meet your hourly rate. So if... You have a rate that you say you're an electrician and you charge thirty seven pounds fifty an hour, um, then it doesn't make sense you're doing bookkeeping or admin or answering your own phones because answering your own phones and bookkeeping is something you can get done very very well for fifteen sixteen quid an hour. If you are um, a business consultant, you charge a hundred quid an hour. It does not make sense you sitting doing your accounts or basic admin. Pay somebody the minimum wage to do that. Pay somebody ten pounds an hour. Treat them well. Give somebody a job. You, pointless you earning, doing a task that somebody could do for £10 an hour for something when you could be out earning £100 an hour. So outsource all the stuff that doesn't meet your minimum thing. Now for me, um, I don't answer the phones a lot. I don't go and do viewings in residential letting properties. So 550 properties, I don't, there is a person that goes and does viewings all day, every day, that's their job. I don't do that anymore, I needed to, but it doesn't take my business forward doing viewings. My time is better going speaking to investors, doing strategy, speaking to high net worth individuals, developing the business forward, leadership management activities. I try very hard, not because it's above me. Uh, I get dirty sorting washing machines and building shelves for people and you know, down and dirty in the activities in the business. I don't mind doing it if I need to and it's an emergency, but I try to avoid it. Not because I'm above it, because my time is better spent doing strategy, doing sales calls, meeting, doing the tasks that nobody else can do in the organisation. But I guarantee you all the tasks a lot of entrepreneurs are doing, they could outsource to other people. So it's tasks that don't meet your hourly rate. If you can get it done cheaper by somebody else, that makes sense. I don't do my own cleaning. Why would I do cleaning when I could be making 100 quid an hour doing my business? So I could pay a cleaner 15 pounds an hour. I never cleaned a car in my life. I've never... Why, to, to me, a dirty car doesn't matter. Um, I turn up to appointments with a dirty car. Some people would argue that's not professional. I don't sit. There's people I have seen with a toothbrush cleaning the alloy wheels of their car. I don't do any of that when I could get that done. There's a guy who does it at East Park for £5. I can get the car clean for £5. Why would I ever do it? The exception to that is if I enjoy it. If I enjoy gardening, if I enjoy DIY, if I enjoyed cleaning and it was a relaxation for me, then that's not work, that's not been productive, that's your relaxation time. But if you're spending time, if I was spending time cleaning my house or cleaning my car, I could be earning, say, £100 an hour. I could get another, I could get another, in the time it takes me to clean a house uh, once a week, or I'll spend the time in my house, I could get another business for pillow that would be getting us £5,000 a year in income. The same amount of time would equate to me getting a, a residual income client for a fully managed property. So my time needs to be focused doing that. I don't do any activities there. And the other stuff is doing, outsource the stuff you don't like doing. So if you just hate doing sales calls, outsource it to somebody. If you hate doing bookkeeping and you just can't get numbers, outsource it to people because you will never ever be good at a task that you hate. You'll never be productive at a task that you hate because your heart's not in it. You're not going to have the passion. We'll come on to that a little bit more in the final one. But anything that you don't like doing, outsource to people so that you can be there for your passion. If I really hated viewings and I went and did viewings and I had to show people around, listen, do you want to rent this property? Do you want to buy this property? If I had an attitude on me because I hate it, I will, whatever, just got the stairs, I hate this. Don't want to be here. My body language would show, my vocalisation, people would get that I don't want to be there, I don't enjoy that. So, don't do it. It's, it's been outsourced. Now, as it happens, I could do it all day long. I love it. I'm there, I'm selling properties, but it doesn't get my, uh, doesn't earn me the income that I need to take the business forward. I'm better outsourcing that to a member of staff that does it 
and that, that's their job. It allows me to free up to do other stuff. So outsource all the stuff that you're not good at, that you don't like doing, or that doesn't meet your hourly rate that we discussed in the last segment. So next one is ditch the small talk, ditch your ego, and ditch your need to be right. And again, depends on who you are, you're getting between five and 20% worth of your time back every single week here. Ditch the small talk. Again, we've spoke about it, sat and talking about it. It's not against mums talking about their school uniforms. I don't want to alienate. I've got hate mail, but sitting talking about that stuff with other people. If it interests you, cool, but if it doesn't, ditch it. We people walk around the water cooler talking about stuff, bitching about other people. Um, you can get rid of all that small talk and make, save so much time um, by not having all that stuff. Just talk, it's not part of who you are, you just don't engage in it. There's a group of people talking, boom go past them, I'm off there to the toilet, cup of tea back to my office, I don't want to get engaged in all the little negative, mostly negative small talk. That's obvious, that's easy, to, it doesn't need any more explanation, but the next one, ditch the ego and the need to be right. So this is something I think, I don't know, maybe I've just noticed it, but things in LinkedIn, um, especially people are arguing and they're putting 30, 40 responses, people the brain feels the need to be right, to outsmart people, to be justified in what they're saying. Uh, the ego doesn't want to get bruised by not responding to somebody or somebody says something and you want to start arguing. The need to be right is something human brains have. And I think if you can eradicate that, I think it's a weakness. The ego, the need to be right, the constant need to justify your opinions and tell people your opinions and prove to people how smart you are and how stupid they are. That's all weaknesses. It's taken away from your productivity and it's never, ever going to get your business earning more money. This is a hard thing to do, by the way. I say that as if I am a nice master at it, um, but actually I'm not. And it was probably six months ago. I'll give an example. There was, it was a chiropractor online and they were mentioning, well, you know, people are, I'm a chiropractor. I, people shouldn't, you shouldn't be vaccinating your kids. Um, an anti-vaxxer and you know people don't realize that x chemicals and vaccinations and that's a very dangerous chemical so you should not vaccinate your kids and i was like well wait a minute you're a chiropractor you don't have a medical degree you're not a doctor you're not you you're not legally or, or medically qualified to be giving advice to people not to vaccinate your kids and by the way it's not about vaccinations but the point she was wrong in my eyes because she's saying this chemical here is dangerous and i was like Actually, do you realise that that chemical is in less, is in more amounts in apples and bananas than it is in the vaccination? Yes, it has that chemical in it. But really, if you researched and you understood vaccinations, you would understand that that chemical is in such a small dose, you actually get more of a dose eating an apple or a banana. And this went back and forth. And again, I spent an hour of my time, and I was, I was on holiday at the time, so I'm wasting my holiday. But I spent an hour of my time because I felt my need to be right to this person. You're wrong with your vaccination comments. Whether vaccination should happen or not happen is not what I'm discussing. The point of the <clears throat> that exact point over the, the chemical dosage in a in a, a vaccination, she says it's dangerous, you shouldn't put this in your body, but it's the same chemical that's in apples. To me, I was hundred percent right. I needed to tell this person that. And then I realized just stop that conversation. Other people were jumping in. I'm like, who are you to jump in? You obviously don't know what you're talking about. These things happen on Facebook all the time. They happen in LinkedIn all the time. People get into arguments. It's people's egos and feel they need to be right. LinkedIn especially, as I said, people are making sometimes outrageous comments to be in a pedestal to spark debate. And it's the same thing as people putting, oh, at the hospital, can't believe he did that. People are so bad and it just gets people in. That's people's ego that they want people to be nice to them and engage and pity them or do whatever. You want to eradicate all this. And it's hard on social media because we use social media for the businesses. It's, we can't, I can't give you advice say don't use social media because we use social media heavily when it comes to Facebook and Facebook ads and LinkedIn. So I need to be on there. But the taking the decision to step back and be away from all that, when you really, well, that person's got, what well, is a political belief, a sports belief, a religious belief, going in and debating people online, maybe you could do it in your spare time, but if it's during your working day, when you should be being productive, I can guarantee some people will be getting 20% more product productivity out of their day by eradicating all those conversations, all those online message threads, and speaking to people about stuff that doesn't matter. You're just letting your ego get in the way. 
So this is, I want to spend some time on the last one. So I'm going to split this video here and make a fourth video, just because the last one to me is the most important one. Uh, it's something I'm very passionate about. So I'll split here and I'll be back with you for video number four.